Welcome back, guys. You made it. You're here at Slim Jim Jammer's channel. It's your boy, Jimmy out of Brooklyn. Press the subscribe button so you can find out about every new weekly release of an episode. We'll be bringing you new content every single week with your boy, Jimmy, Slim Jim Jammer. Today, we're coming with a, another episode of Trapping Stories. That's right. We're talking animal trapping stories. Part de, part dos. Parte dos. I had a lot of fun recording the last episode of Trapping Stories, telling you a little bit about the wild times. Things that seemed, when I was growing up, for some reason to be normal. But now, as an adult, we know better. I had been talking in the last episode about the trapping conventions. At these trapping conventions, we had buddies we would see all around the country. They would have a national convention that was the biggest for the entire country, and then every state had its own state conventions. And then there would be big organizations that would be like sort of trappers' guilds, and they would have conventions as well. One of the groups of uh, people that were good friends with my father and myself were the Williams. And when we called them the Williams, that was the best way to describe them. The reason I say calling them the Williams was the best way to describe them. It was another father and son. At the time, I was, you know, a little kid, and we were hanging out with a father and son. The son was my dad's age, and the father was, like, more of a, gra a grandpa. And when I we called them the Williams, it's because they both had the same name. One of them was named William Williams, and the other was named William Williams. And they both went by Bill, so we would call one Bill Jr. So the Williams was pretty fitting. And the Williams were really nice guys. They were out of Indiana. They were mystified. Every time we would talk to them about New York City, anything we would say about New York, things that were normal for us were beyond crazy for them. We were out at a convention and this was someplace very rural. I think we were out in Ohio. We used to go to Ohio quite a bit. My father and I, being from New York City, had a hankering for some Chinese food. And we thought, you know, let's bring the Williams along, Chinese food, give them a new experience. They had mentioned they had never had Chinese food before. So we go to take them to get Chinese food, and we go to bring these guys to get Chinese. They do not know what to order. It's one of the places that has the pictures up. You know what I'm talking about. The little hole-in-the-wall Chinese places that have the photos of the food. They had never seen anything like it before. When we were trying to order for them, we decided, they said, just, just pick something for us. So we picked what was considered, we thought would be like maybe one of the most benign things on the menu. They told us they didn't like spice at all, including salt, mostly. So we picked uh, chicken with cashew nuts. When the plate actually came, they <laughs> were looking at it sort of dumbfounded. We then come to find that neither of the Williams had ever eaten rice before. I mean, again, one guy was in his 50s and one guy was in his 70s or his 80s. He was kind of prodding at it with his fork for a little bit. He wouldn't take a bite. And then he looks and he goes, are those nuts on top? Referencing the cashew nuts. And we said, yeah, it's chicken with cashew nuts. He goes, all right. And he, all he did, he didn't eat any of the Chinese food, but he did take the cashew nuts and he picked them off the top of the plate, off the top of the meal, and he put them into his pocket. And we asked Bill Williams why he just put the cashew nuts in his pocket. He said, for later. Another time we had gone in a convention out, this was the National Convention. The National Convention was always the best convention because it was the biggest in the country that year. So, best chance of making some, some scratch. I was going out there to make a little bit of cash. And we were out in uh, Michigan one time. I remember a 15 hour drive to get out there. One of the very few times mother actually came with us on a trapping convention, usually just my father and I. But my mom came out, and because my mom came out, we couldn't stay in the back seat of the truck. When I came in the front, my dad in the front seat, me in the back seat, or in a tent. We actually got a hotel, I remember, went to Michigan. So we were living large that time. And I was very young at the time, too. I think I was like eight years old. We go to this Michigan Trappers convention, and it's it's it was huge. It might have been one of the biggest ones I'd ever been to. And there was just an unbelievable amount of different vendors and tons of kids running around and it was really really good time it was one of the few times in which i was at a trapping convention as a kid and had gotten into like a whole gaggle of kids and all of a sudden we were like a gang of kids out there like it was like a dozen of us the funny thing was that i was obviously the only kid that was from a city they were all from very rural places a couple of the kids that weren't wearing shoes and had like never worn shoes unless they had to go into town or to a formal event or maybe to school or something like that. When they asked me where I was from and I told them that I was from Brooklyn, they were like, Brooklyn, New York? And I was like, yeah, Brooklyn, New York, New York City, baby, the big city. And they were kind of mesmerized by that fact. I had, of all things, on my face, a cut. 
I, I, I want to say it was across my chin or something. And I think I had fallen into a nail. I still have a scar on my chin. You can't see, obviously. But I had this cut on my face. And I remember they were like, how'd you get that cut on your face when I was there? And they were kind of wanting me to fulfill all of their wildest desires with the idea that New York City is a dangerous place. How'd you get that cut on your face? And I'm eight years old. I'm like, knife fight. And after that, it was my gaggle of kids. It was my gang of kids. And I remember we would go around and I was like calling the shots. I remember there was kids as old as 11 or 12. And, and everyone was like, what are we going to do next, Jim? Because I, at that point, was the toughest of all the kids in their mind. And I had a lot of charisma and I was this sort of personality. So easily I took to the role of leader. And we were just like rolling around and causing mischief. And it was pretty silly. We bought some blow darts and were like... <laughs> like shooting targets, nothing, no animals, not like you would think. We were just shooting like bullseyes, stuff like that. At one point in this convention, it was over like four days. After a couple days, I, I had this very silly reputation in the convention. And this girl approached me in the convention. And she was a bit taller than I was. And she was bigger than I was. And she was like, hey, are you the kid from Brooklyn, New York? And I said, yeah. I'm the guy from Brooklyn. Who wants to know? Forget about it. She was actually carrying with her a trophy, and she also wasn't wearing shoes. You might remember in the last uh, trapping episode, if you haven't seen it, I mentioned the barefoot trap setting contest in which you set a bear trap with your bare feet. You jump in the air and land on the legs and those big jaws, and you set the trap. So she showed me the trophy, and she goes, Yeah, I won this trophy from getting first place in the girls under 12 barefoot trap setting contest. She was proving to me that she was tough. And I was like, oh, yeah. She's like, yeah, I'm the toughest girl at the convention. And I was like, okay, sure. And she was like, we should hang out. And we did. And, all, and I remember now it was like me and her. We had like a, a little kind of like, and I'm trying to think of it, what you would call it. It was it was like a, some sort of union. It was silly. We didn't do, we didn't, we didn't do anything. We were little kids. But we were, we were ruling over all of the domain of the children in a recess-like manner. If you know the TV show Recess. But it was good times. Very silly. In the last trapping video, I had also mentioned how my father had been in possession of one Ghostbuster ambulance. He was the trapping Ghostbuster guy. He also had another vehicle, and the other vehicle that he had was a big trapping pickup truck. Of all things, the pickup truck was actually larger than the ambulance, and the ambulance was 18 foot long. And this pickup truck was massive. It was a 1983 F-350. It had dual wheels in the back from the sheer size of the thing. Anytime we would go over like the Verrazano Bridge, they would charge my father the commercial price for one he had lettering on the side, but they had the dual wheels in the back and they were like, you are a truck. And he said, but I'm a small passenger vehicle. It's like me and him in the cab. Did have a back seat as well. But this thing was massive. It was so big. And he wanted to cover the back of the pickup. Because back of the pickup in New York City, like people could throw stuff in there or they could steal stuff out of it. So he wanted to cover up the back, put some traps in there. And he had had some cover for the thing for years that was really garbagey. So he decided to sort of like DIY his own hatch covers. And he made these big wooden covers that had metal handles on them, that had rivets on the side, and they fit snugly into the back. He could lift these things up and he could load stuff into the back. It was very, very crafty. And we had these covers on the back of the truck for years. And they did become to deteriorate many years later after, you know, as he made them from wood. And maybe about, I don't remember exactly how many years later it was. But we had taken a trip to Six Flags Great Adventure, which is in New Jersey, theme park. And when we went to Six Flags Great Adventure, we had gotten a free ticket to go there, including safari. My father was obsessed with winning things on the radio. He would call in all the time to win these radio contests. And one time he won a radio contest. Go to Six Flags, a couple of tickets. So won this radio contest, go to Six Flags with the safari, and you drive through the safari. If you've never done it before, you drive through a zone that is essentially sort of like a zoo, and you do it very, very slowly because you're on a road with the cars, and then there's just animals kind of free roaming around the car. Nothing too carnivorous, I guess, is the hope. I mean, there's no lions or anything like that. It was like giraffe, and they're kind of trying to stick their head in the window, and maybe you got a piece of vegetable or something you give them. I don't know. We didn't do that. We didn't have any food. And then there was, I don't know, other types of mostly like African savanna animals, probably something like that. And at one point, 
you get into this area. I remember I was excited. As, I've always like loved monkeys and apes ever since I was a kid. Probably because of the nature that they are always, again, pulling off all these mischief kind of things, mischievous situations, and they look like little people. So that was always kind of hilarious to me. So I was excited. I'm like, oh, we'll get into like a monkey area. And we did get into an area that had some, honestly, they were monkeys. After I edit this video together, I'll go online and figure out. I'll just like put a picture here of what type of ape it was or what type of monkey it was. I'll figure that out, I'm sure. Anyway, can't remember at this moment, but like clockwork, we they get into like the monkeyish area or the ape area, and these things are going to town, and they are all over the vehicle. Like they climb all over the truck, and because of the nature that my father had this working truck that had all these pieces hanging off of it that were not like a modern vehicle. Modern vehicles are relatively streamlined, and maybe the only thing that could get, you know, damaged off your vehicle in a, in a general sense would be like your mirrors if you don't put them in when you park in New York kind of thing. So, but he had these huge mirrors that were hanging off with all kinds of weird arms and weird antennas. And I mean, this thing was a very ridiculous looking ride. When we get in, these apes just start wanting to tear his thing up. I mean, they are ripping the, the mirrors off <laughs> as much as they can, <laughs> biting onto the antennas. They are actually trying to eat the wood of the hatch covers, <laughs> biting into the wood and get on trying try to eat the varnish. I mean, it was it was it was a madhouse, and we get like a little panicky. We're like, oh my god, they're like they're just they're just gonna dismantle this thing. We're gonna be left with, like sitting on wheels with you know, like like the Three Stooges or something, and we. You know we just can't start speeding up. They do tell you if your vehicle gets damaged when you go in here, like, sorry, Jack, but I don't think there was anything as far as like harming the animals, and we were not wanting to do that. What ends up happening is my father had some rebar in the back under the hatch, and you know, the hatch is not super secured, it's not like it was locked. And one of the apes, or one of the monkeys, reaches in, grabs out this rebar, rebar pulls that thing out. He got it. And he jumps off the back of the truck and he starts running into the little savanna area with the rebar. And all these other monkeys start chasing him. And he's got the rebar. And we were thinking, this is bad. This guy's gonna be the new leader of the pack. Nobody's gonna be able to mess with this monkey with a piece of metal. And as we see, as we're looking into the, you know, area behind us, as this is happening, we see what looks like one of the little zoo security or the safari security or Six Flags or people who work there. They pull around in a van, like this thing comes over really quick towards the ape with the bar in its hand. They grab the ape. <laughs> And they <laughs> snatch him up. So I guess that they saw that and they knew that was a bad situation. So everything got, everything was safe and okay. Thank you so much for watching. Press the like button. See you next time, my guy.